Greetings, this is Tom with Bunkum Shinola. Appearing in the film Freaks is enough lifetime cred for anybody. Even in its current, existent, bastardized form, Todd Browning's masterpiece remains ground zero magnetic north for a certain type of outsider, underdog, revolutionary self-determination. Certain to remain an inspiration for all time. Several members of the cast attempted to extend their careers beyond their appearance in that film, but only Angelo Rosito's career stretched pre-Freaks all the way through the 80s until damn near near his death in 1991. He appeared in almost 100 films, several classics. Um, naturally, he appeared in Wizard of Oz, March of the Wooden Soldiers, The Picture of Dorian Gray, Requiem for a Heavyweight, The Greatest Show on Earth, Carousel, and Dr. Doolittle. But it's his appearances in an astounding, dizzying array of cults, exploitation, let's say psychotronic curiosities over the decades, which cements his place in cinema history. I mean, just listen to this partial sampler. Seven Footprints to Satan, The Mysterious Island, Tarzan the Ape Man, Hell's a Poppin', The Spider Woman, Pygmy Island, Bandit Queen, Jungle Moon Men, The Wild and the Innocent, The Magic Sword, Confessions of an Opium Eater, Terrified, The Trip, Brain of Blood, Dracula vs. Frankenstein, Mongo's Back in Town, the midget mobster epic Little Cigars, the softcore porno Fairy Tales, the Dorothy Stratton vehicle Galaxina, Smokey Bites the Dust, and even the Village People movie Can't Stop the Music. Multiple appearances with Boris Karloff. Multiple appearances with Bella Lugosi. He did voice acting in the 70s animated Lord of the Rings, and he appeared in an alien suit in Invasion of the Saucer Men. And I would be remiss if I did not mention three personal favorites. One, Bruno Fasoto's no-budget, art house, fever dream to outdo even Carnival of Souls, Dementia, also known as Daughter of Horror. You've probably noticed it on the marquee in the blob. Two, one of my favorites stitched together, incomprehensible log jams of absurdity called Mesa of Lost Women. Three, he appears in still one of the most controversial exploitation grindhouse films. It's still borderline illegal, even now, Child Ride. Eventually, this stretched into an interesting variety of television appearances, everything from the Rockford Files to Star Trek Next Generation, and entertaining an entire 70s generation of viewers in a suit on the H.R. Puffin Stuff show. Towards the end of his career, he took probably his best-known role in Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, but with the posthumous reconstruction of Orson Welles' final film, The Other Side of the World, appearing alongside John Huston, Peter Bogdanovich, Dennis Hopper, and the like, bestows him a final film appearance of perhaps the highest esteem. His persona was so distinctive that even his avatar appeared as a character in Nathaniel West's Hollywood novel, Day of the Locust. But outside of Freaks, his most recognizable legacy, his most lasting contribution to pop culture, just might indeed be his portraiture on rock and roll LP cover designs. In 1975, when Bob Dylan decided that he would release officially the Great White Way bootleg as the Basement Tapes, the photographer Reed Miles, who had gained fame for his work on jazz LPs, was enlisted to take a sideshow oddity-themed cover photo, which foreshadowed the carnival atmosphere of the tour later that year that Dylan would take with the Rolling Thunder review. In the concocted iconography, Angelo makes an appearance in the garb of his lifelong day job as a Hollywood newspaper stand hawker. And then a decade later, Tom Waits enlisted Michael Russ to create the cover art for Swordfish Trombones. And once again, Angelo was chosen as a representative denizen of the Los Angeles underbelly of Desperate Souls. It would be easy to mistake the other character on the cover design as Tor Johnson. Surprisingly, Angelo and Tor only appeared in one film together, Carousel, but that is not him, just a lookalike. <laughs> he also appears in the concurrent video produced for the song In the Neighborhood as part of a lurching parade of oddity outsiders. And by the way, since someone is bound to ask, no, that is not him on the cover of The Doors' 1967 record, Strange Days. That is another actor of diminutive stature named Michu Masados. An easy enough mistake to make, <laughs> but truthfully, Rosito stands alone. From throughout the history of cinematic freakdom, 
to appearances in noted modern literature, all the way through being enshrined in the immortal imagery of rock and roll. As the totality of pop culture trudges forward, the two foot eleven Angela Rosito has cemented a permanence and stature which is truly monumental. Hey, this is Tom with Bunkum Shinola. Appreciate you checking the video out. I will put a link in the description below to Angelo's astonishing IMDB. <laughs> now, I highly encourage you to check out some of his crazy filmdom. Thanks for watching. Talk to you again soon.